So, hi folks, I'm Antonio Arojo, I'm an urban sketcher and a mathematician, and I do research in spherical perspectives. I was supposed to talk about these perspectives at the USK Symposium in Hong Kong this year, but since that got cancelled, you are getting a bunch of videos instead. I'm eventually gonna go over the basics, but today I'd like to start midway with a neat trick for those of you who already draw equirectangular spherical perspectives using grids. In later videos we will go over the basics and then circle back to this from a fresh point of view. So, many of you have seen spherical perspectives like this one. And you know that once you draw them, you can send them to Facebook, let's say, or Flickr, and you can see them as virtual reality panoramas. That is, you view them as if you are inside your original scene. These are the kinds of drawings that we will be doing. Now, to draw these, you probably use a grid like this, called an equirectangular grid. So, if you've ever drawn in equirectangular spherical perspective, you have seen a grid sort of like this. These are the cardinal points, forward, left, right, and back. And the verticals are the images of true verticals in space. And these curves are the images of horizontals going from one cardinal point to its opposite. So, for instance, from left to right. So, all these curves are horizontals going from left to right. And, for instance, this one is the horizontal that goes from your left to your right and that passes in front of you at exactly halfway up, that is 45 degrees elevation. Well, this grid is very useful and you can draw um, lots of uh, different situations uh, just, by, um, just by tracing over these lines. So, for instance, if I wanted to draw a wall in front of me, I would just trace some adequate horizontal, and then a vertical, and then another horizontal at the bottom, and another vertical to close it. So I would get something like this. If you, know, if you don't want to have the grid in your final drawing, you can draw on top of tracing paper, for instance. Um, or you could draw on a faded grid or something. Anyway, you would get something like this, where you have a front wall obtained just by tracing horizontals from left to right, and then you have a left wall obtained by tracing horizontals from back to front, and so on. So you have this nice thing, and you can use these walls as guidance to draw objects and people inside the, this space, but um, this method, which I will call the fixed grid method, um, it, it's the common method, but it, it's very limited. In this way, it's very hard to measure anything. For instance, how do I know where is the midpoint of this wall? It could be here, it could be here. In this wall, it's even more complicated to find. Is it here? Is it here? It's a big difference. And you're not exactly uh, sure where anything is. So I'm going to tell you a method uh, for making measurements without having to do, you know, uh, calculations that you don't want to do while you're drawing. That's a method for measuring in a simple geometrical way. So the method passes by solving this fundamental problem. How to draw any line that is not limited to these printed horizontals, okay? These are just some specific horizontals. They are just the horizontals from front to back, left to right. What if I want some horizontal going to some other point? Let's say this point here in between these two. Well, I don't know. How, how do I do that? And what if I want to draw a diagonal? You know, not a horizontal line at all. How do I draw it? Well, it turns out that in the sense, this grid already contains every possible line. And I'm going to show you how to use it to draw 
arbitrary lines between any two points. So here is how you do it. I call this the sliding grid method by opposition to the fixed grid method. And the reason I name it that is because sliding is what you do. Well, you take this grid and you're going to slide it horizontal, horizontally, left or right. And I will show you how to use that slide to find any diagonal that you care to find. Well, in order to facilitate that, especially when you're drawing outside and you don't have, you know, fixed support to help you, I use this little trick. If I'm using, let's say, an A4 drawing sheet, I take a sheet exactly the double the size of that, a tracing paper sheet, in this case an A3 tracing paper sheet, and I fold it in half. Okay, because I fold it in half, I make an envelope and I can stick my grid inside this envelope. Okay, and this way it's very easy to slide my grid against the fold of the envelope and therefore keep it steady so that I don't lose my bearings of the grid with regards to the drawing because of course you have to be consistent all the way. So in order to help that, I always mark my corners so that I can find the position of my grid once I'm finished with slide. So, okay, so how do you find, how do you use this grid and this envelope to find the line that joins two arbitrary points in equirectangular perspective? Well, take these two points, these two corners of this wall. How do I join them? You see that none of these printed horizontals will join these two points, okay? They are going from left to right, and you see that the one that passes through this point does not obviously hit this point, it just hits here. So what do you do? Well, it turns out that if you slide this grid left or right by an adequate amount, you will find that at some point, one of these printed lines on the grid will exactly match the two points. So in this case, it is this purple line that passes exactly through these two points. And you see I've colored these grid lines precisely to make it easier to distinguish between them when they pass here through these meeting points at the at the equatorial plane, at the, the, the horizon, uh, where it can be pretty confusing to see which line is coming out on the other side. So, okay, why is this true? Well, I'm not going to tell you why it is true right now. I'll leave that for another video. I will just say, I will just point out that it's not trivial that just because you found a line that after a certain shift, after a certain slide, uh, will join the two points, it's not trivial that this has any special significance. It could just be a coincidence, okay? But no, you can prove it and you can read it on my paper and I will talk about it in a video. Um, you can prove that, in fact, this is a theorem. You can always find a single line of these that will join any two points after an adequate shift and once you found, found that line, it is guaranteed that this line that you found to join these two points is the exact image of the true straight line in space that joins the points in question, in this case, the corners of this wall. Okay, so let's do this again. Suppose that now you want to join these two corners. Well, again, you shift, you shift the grid and you look very carefully. And by the way, this can be fiddly because there's a lot of lines and even with the colors, it can get confusing. But later again, I will show you in another video how to make this easier. But okay, you shift very carefully and you keep looking and you will find that again, after a while, you find some lines 
you find one line that exactly joins the two corner points. Okay, in this case, interesting thing, it's almost this blue line, but it's not exactly. Look at that. It's, in fact, the line that joins the two points is very close to the blue line, but it's not exactly the blue line. What you can say is that, is that it is between this blue line and this orange line. Okay, here you again see it. It's between the blue and the orange. Well, what you have to understand is that when I say that it's guaranteed that one of these lines will join your two given points, well, it's not one of these printed lines, okay? You have to imagine that, in fact, there is an infinity of lines. In between any two of these printed lines, there is another one, okay? So in between this blue and this purple line, there is this other line, which you, you can pretty much guess at, because there's not a lot of space in between them. And in between this one and this one, there's another, which again, you can pretty much guess at, and uh, of course, and so on. So, but uh, you just print these ones because you don't want too many lines crowding your grid. And anyway, this grid that I printed and that I will link, I will link to so that you can use it. Uh, it's a five degree grid. So your error is just five degrees at most. And usually with a five degree grid, your error in tracing this will not be bigger than half the grid width, so it will be about 2.5 degrees, which is anyway smaller than the error you make in your observations. So um, in this case, what you see, to join these points, what you see here is that you can say that um, these two points, they are connected by a line that is between the blue and the orange line. And you can even say that it's not the middle line, okay? It's closer to the blue line. And you can sort of say that it's about one quarter, one quarter up from the blue line towards the orange line. And here again, if you look at it, it fits. It's again, one quarter down from the blue line towards the orange line. So you can imagine, and you can very easily guess its shape. It's this line here, always by eye, judging by eye, always one quarter of the way between the blue and the orange line. Okay, so you have it here. But the important thing here is that um, whatever the exact position of the line, you'll find that as the two lines come together here, You, the error that you make here is very, very small. So whatever the exact position of this line, you have found with great precision the intersection of these two diagonals. And this is very important because the point where these two diagonals meet is exactly the halfway point of this wall. It's the, the middle of the wall. And why? For the same reason that you do the same construction in classical perspective. If you have a wall and you look at it straight on, the way to find the, the midpoint of the wall is just to take this, these diagonals and to find their intersection. Well, and if you put the wall in classical perspective, it goes, these lines, the horizontals go toward the vanishing point. Okay, and to find the middle point, again, you just project these two diagonals and here you have it because, you know, classical perspective preserves linearity. Then you know that diagonals are projected as lines and it preserves intersections. So you know that this is the image of this. Okay. And as you see, of course, the middle point in perspective is not at the middle, is not halfway through here. It's a bit closer to the vanishing point. And the same happens here. The middle point is not at the metrical middle here, it's a bit further towards the vanishing point. So this allows you to make measurements. 
This allows you to do basic perspective arithmetic. I have used this to find the middle of a segment and I could use it to find the double of a segment, that is, to make perspective multiplication and perspective division. And um, in, in further videos, I will show you how to do exactly that, how to do basic perspective arithmetic, as well as uh, some further interesting constructions that allow you to have as much control over equirectangular perspective as you have over classical perspective. So, hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next video.